Is this thing on? Because it's getting ready to be on. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Bell Ringer. My name is Greg Pokerki. I am your host. This marks our 50th episode, which is crazy to think about. So first of all, I just want to thank everybody that listens and especially every person that has joined me as a guest. This really is one of the coolest parts of my job, and I'm so excited to be able to tell these great stories of the people I sit across the table with and pick their brains. Uh, So for episode number 50, we thought we should do something a little bit special and a little different than what we normally do. A couple weeks ago, we had an event called A Plan for Tomorrow at Hotel Henry, and a big part of the event was a two-day visit from a bunch of national, well-known site selectors. Uh, Before we get into what a site selector is, a little bit of background, they toured Buffalo for two days, or a day and a half, and then came to an event at Hotel Henry, sat on a panel, and gave us kind of their impressions of Buffalo. Many of them have never been to Buffalo, or for some of them, haven't been here in a very long time. This episode is going to be a compilation of their thoughts. So what is a site selector? To answer that question, I brought in my colleague, our research director, Matthew Hubacher. Matt, thanks for joining us. Greg, great to be with you again, and congratulations on the 50th episode of Bell Ringer. Thank you very much, of, of which you were a guest along the way, and this is your, your triumphant return. <laughs> uh, so tell everybody, what is a site selector? So a site selector, or site location consultant, provides a location analysis to companies who are making investment decisions. Uh, that those analyses can range um, from everything to real estate, workforce, talent, logistics and supply chain, uh, industry partnerships, college and university recruitment, incentives, and anywhere in between. Site selectors provide detailed analysis uh, to these companies. They help them make informed decisions um, and really like the best financial decisions for their relocation or expansion projects. And of the group that our listeners are going to hear from uh, after after you and I talk, um, just talk about like the caliber of the guests. I know um, we kind of got like an A-list here, so a little bit on that. We were incredibly happy to host um, six site selectors um, for a fam- familiarization tour and at the Plan for Tomorrow event. Um, these were site selectors who were from you know across the country, Uh, New York, New Jersey, Chicago, Nashville, uh, and they really were, you know, an A-list group of site selectors who are, you know, working deals, who work a lot of deals, and who we thought uh, was important to make sure that they um, visited Buffalo, Niagara, and got to see what's going on here uh, firsthand. Awesome, and Matt spent the full kind of two days with these site selectors, so periodically throughout the episode, him and I are going to pop back in into your earbuds to share some of his insights. But first, uh, one of the first questions we asked these site selectors on the panel, what most surprised you about Buffalo? Here are some of their thoughts. Just flying over the lakes and seeing just the beauty of this region. The first words out of my mouth was, this is a much cuter, less expensive New York. The fact that I didn't realize how much of a um, water city Buffalo really is. I know you have the lake and and that's obvious, but just seeing all of the potential along the the river. Definitely saw that this is a typical place, a place where people would love to be. Canal side and seeing what's going on there from families and to look at the park there and school kids at the park to going to resurgence, you know, and seeing like guys working on a laptop at bar, (laughs) to to going down to uh, Delaware Street last night seeing you know, cool restaurants. And, and those are all unique to Buffalo. The 20 years ago, the Buffalo I remember is not what I have seen the last couple days. And I didn't realize what was going on. I have had a number of surprises. Um, I think my most recent one in the couple last couple days, and the biggest surprise, was hearing that you're a foodie town. And um, obviously, for communities that people want to relocate to, things like parks 
and food and the amenities are all important um, elements. Obviously, the site selectors were pleasantly surprised by what they saw in Buffalo. Matt, where did you take these folks over their two-day visit? What were you proud to show off? We had a pretty busy couple days with the site selectors, and the first day started at Hotel Henry, which was the hotel that they were staying at, which they were pleasantly surprised with and could not stop talking about how much they enjoyed Hotel Henry. So that was a good start. Uh, from Hotel Henry, we went over to the medical campus and met with Alex Gress with 43 North. Not only did Alex talk about 43 North, the business plan competition and some of the investments they've made in entrepreneurs uh, in residence here in Western New York, but the site selectors also chatted with a couple comp 43 North winners, a couple companies that are doing business here in Western New York, and they were very impressed uh, with those opportunities. And Alex is actually going to be on the podcast in a couple of weeks to talk about their upcoming finals event. So that's kind of a cool tie-in. From there, we went to Seneca One Tower, where we met with both Mike Whistler with M&T Bank, and Mike shared information on the M&T Tech Hub, which is going to bring thousands of new tech jobs to downtown Buffalo. And we also had Douglas Jamal, who obviously owns Seneca One Tower and is developing the tower. Just kind of brag about Buffalo, and it was, um, it's amazing to have an out-of-town developer be so pro-Buffalo and be a pro-Buffalo cheerleader. And that was something the site selectors mentioned, that in no other community would they have a developer just kind of freestyle on the ha goings-on of that region. And to have Douglas Jamal talk so highly about Buffalo just off the cuff uh, really resonated with the site selectors. The true all-star of the few days was the weather. And because the weather was so great, we decided to walk um, from Seneca One down to the Canal Side Boardwalk and then looped around to the Explore More Museum, where we did a quick visit um, with at the new museum. Um, and we met with some industry experts um, at the various exhibits and talked about some strategic advantages and assets uh, here in Western New York. From there, we got back on the bus and headed to Northland's Workforce Training Center for a couple different visits. The first was a roundtable discussion with local manufacturers, both very large and mid-sized manufacturers. And they talked about doing business, being a manufacturer here in Western New York, doing business in Western New York, why they continue to do business here. And they talked about workforce considerations, you know, um, talent attraction, workforce recruitment, uh, retention. Um, they also talked about the skills that um, you know they find um, that are plentiful here in Western New York, and quite frankly, some of the skill sets um, that we need to train more individuals on, which was a perfect segue to our walking tour of Northland's Workforce Training Center uh, with Peter Coleman with uh, BNMA. And we saw all the different classrooms. The site selector spoke to a lot of students, and those students had nothing but positive things to say about you know the outlook on their future and why you know, they're um, going through the training at Northlands. Um, Peter Coleman also mentioned, uh, spoke about the placement of some of the Northlands graduates and how Northlands is matching the skilled workforce with the companies that need those manufacturing workers. And overall, it was just a very positive experience to show that not only are we looking to recruit companies to our region, but we're arming them with the workforce that they need for today and for the future. From there, um, we went, uh, hopped in the bus and went to the old First Ward to the Resurgence Brewery for refreshment and wings, which was a positive way to end the, end the tour um, to really show that you know, resurgence that Buffalo Niagara is going through. The next day after our plan for tomorrow meeting and the site selector um, panel discussion, those site selectors whose flights could accommodate uh, we went up to, and had a behind-the-scenes tour of the Niagara Power Vista in Lewiston, uh, which was just an amazing once-in-a-lifetime experience, something that you know the site selection consultants and, quite honestly, I could have never had experienced um, without um, our partnership with NIPA and, and the behind-the-scenes access that uh, we were provided, which was really cool. And then we had just enough time to um, head over to the falls and walk through the state park where there were a lot of pictures being taken, a lot of selfies being taken. 
We had just enough time to get the site selectors back to the airport before their flights, where I assured them an hour was plenty of time to get through security into their gates so that they can get home in time for their uh, uh, final destinations. And they really got the full Buffalo experience. Here are a few of their favorite stops along the way. One of the other uh, stops on the tour yesterday was at the Northern Training Center, and I really enjoyed that. The level, again, of investment that's gone into that uh, program is amazing, and I think it uh, is consistent with some of what we just heard from, from Mina and, and Brett about uh, the level of commitment that the community has uh, to its workforce. I echo Kevin's points about the Training Center. I thought it was fantastic. I thought the attention to detail um, and, and the, just the the, le the quality of the of the facility was was just tremendously impressive. And we hear some of the stories of the folks who have come through there and what they've been able to do, you know, with their lives through that investment. I mean, that's that's at the end of the day what you know truly successful economic development is all about. I, I thought that I thought that facility was just one of the places we visited yesterday was 43 North, um, which is the incubator um, startup kind of hub. Um, what was great about it is what was different from other incubators we've been to and had, um, had access to over the years in other communities. Uh, the hubs that they had and the um, types of products and, and their competition and the sense of community within that little um, space that they were in was just outstanding. We've never seen that kind of, um, just the, the level of funding, I think, which I think can really help a company really get kick-started, which is the whole idea of these innovation hubs and these um, so I thought that personally was one of the highlights of yesterday's trip. Seeing 43 North, seeing what Seneca, those are all existing buildings that now have this great purpose and vision of just basically taking something that was already here, the footprint that was here, that what made Buffalo what Buffalo is. Buffalo has definitely benefited from a lot of national and global attention with people visiting Buffalo, writing nice travel stories, and really glowing reviews. One constant through every review that I've read is how friendly our people are. Is that something that the site selectors touched on with you along the bus route? And I know we're going to hear a little bit about it from the panel coming up after our little chat here. It most definitely came up both, you know, just in the group setting, you know, on the, on the tour and on the bus, but also a handful of site selectors kind of pulled me aside and spoke to me privately. And the thing that the message that kept coming back was, when we mentioned that Buffalo Niagara is the Midwest of the Northeast, like that really, that really talked to them. And whether they were talking to business executives or the students at Northlands or um, the companies at 43 North or just random, you know, folks that we saw on the street, they just couldn't help but mention the positivity, the community spirit, um, the f focus on the future just the general good vibes that are happening uh, here in the region. And they even joked during the manufacturer's roundtable that it sounded like everyone was talking off the same script. And I promise you, no one was scripted. We didn't give anyone talking points beforehand. But that positive community spirit shone through um, throughout the handful of days. And here are some of the site selectors' thoughts on that really authentic belief in the community from every person that they heard from throughout the two days. Um, just driving around the community yesterday, I just felt like it was at home. Um, the weather was great, it, it was definitely Chamber of Commerce Day, um, but really I just felt like this community is a family. We're all marching in the same direction, um, we all have the same vision, and these are our goals. I had two roommates that were from Buffalo, I uh, never really had any experience of knowing what Buffalo was until I met these two guys. And what I was always impressed by them is the fact that they had such a strong love and passion for their city. And without ever being in Buffalo, I just felt that with me. And then when I finally had an opportunity to come in and see Buffalo firsthand, I got to see what they liked about it and what they always felt positive about. So when you're getting out and trying to get the word out of Buffalo, it's going to be the people that are here, even the people who have left, that are living somewhere else who still have that strong passion for the community. Two things that really kind of knock my socks off here. Well, one, really the dynamism. I mean, there's just a lot of positive things happening, a lot of really positive development. Um, and, and I think that it, it's, a, it's a great story that you've got to tell. Um, secondly, I would say that, uh, you know, I, I think this came through a lot of the comments, 
the sense of community was really very, very impressive in terms of what's being accomplished, in terms of the different organizations working together, in terms of the ideas and the vision that, uh, that, that Buffalo Niagara is trying to put forth. And it's, it's an impressive thing to see. I mean, everywhere we went yesterday, um, there was talks about, oh, we're spending money to develop this, um, we're putting money into our art gallery, um, we're spending money on this workforce initiative. And just the level of funding, I think, that is coming from all levels in the community. Um, one of the things, again, that really stood out to me, we went to the Seneca One Tower, and uh, the presentation was made by the developer. And his passion um, and just love for this community and again the amount of money and investment that he is putting into that area uh, which it's I mean it's it's truly just fantastic the last question we asked of all these site selectors on the panel if you had one million dollars to invest where in Buffalo Niagara would you do so and remember Greg all the site selectors wanted more than a million dollars right exactly so here here are their thoughts and really pertinent to our organization as well. I put it into a marketing blitz because what I said before is I had my preconceived ideas of Buffalo and what it was the one time I was here 20 years ago and what I saw was very different. I saw a, a, a burgeoning creative class. I saw great infill projects. I saw some exciting things. I saw um, beauty around, which I had forgotten how, how beautiful it was with the water and how Buffalo was. It's a phenomenal place, a lot to offer, a hidden gem, truly a hidden gem. You're doing a lot of great things. You have a story to tell now, and I really, you know, now is the time to tell it. Obviously, the site selectors really enjoyed their visit to Buffalo, and we loved having them here. Matt, just from a 30,000 feet level, why is it important to get these people actually here on the ground and not just emailing them and, and giving them a phone call? Like I mentioned, site selectors you provide counsel to companies making investment decisions. And they are deal influencers. Their clients are very large companies that are looking to invest in relocation or expansion projects. And they're a target audience of Invest Buffalo Niagara. We, my role within, one of my roles within the organization is to facilitate that relationship with the site selection community. So over the past few years, I've um, attended site selection conferences across the country. I've done um, kind of outbound visits to site selectors to meet with them in their offices. Uh, we have a bi-monthly newsletter that goes out to a large list of site selection and corporate real estate personnel. But... Honestly, Greg, there's no better way to show them what's happening here in Buffalo, Niagara, and demonstrate the renaissance that we're the economic renaissance that we're experiencing than to get them here, um, boots on the ground, um, meeting with local companies, talking to local individuals, uh, and just giving them that sense of that um, that spirit, that that community spirit that is so pervasive in the region. So we typically end every podcast episode with the blizzard round of questions, but since you've already been the guest and have answered these questions. You've gone through the gauntlet. And since it is our 50th episode, we're gonna flip the script and have you ask me some hard-hitting journalistic questions that I'm way too over-prepared for because I've asked them 50 times. Greg, in my right hand, I have the Blizzard Round questions for you. Ready. Our dear host. If you were a flavor of ice cream, what flavor would you be? Panda Paws ice cream. And why? A uh, good mix of different flavors, you know, a little, uh, you know, vanilla ice cream foundation, different pops of flavor throughout, fits my personality. What's one book or TV show that you would recommend to the listening audience? Mad Men. Watch it on Netflix. If someone needs to get a hold of you, should they give you a text or give you a phone call? Um... This one is always tough for me. I'm going to go phone call, though. That's probably the best. Okay. Bigger fan of the Bills or the Sabres? You know this quite well by our chats in your office. Go Bills. 3-1. and one. And about to be 4-1 and one after we beat the Titans. People may not know this, but it does snow in Buffalo, Niagara from time to time. When that bit. does happen, are you a hiker or a skier? 
I would prefer hiking. Okay. Last and most important, wings. Drumsticks or flats? Drumsticks all the way. That is the one answer that I say every episode <laughs> to end it, which is probably annoying, but I like drumsticks, so that's my answer. <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for flipping the script on me. Thanks for joining. Thanks to all the site selectors. And truly, with after 50 episodes, thank you to you guys so much for listening. Everybody that's joined as a guest, uh, super excited for the next episode, number 51, and everyone to follow. Thanks, guys.